I have the pleasure of uh, trying to explain to you how technology is coming into our lives on an everyday basis and how the digital economy is going to affect us. And I want to thank Dr. Michelle Kerr for starting the conversation about building for India and in India, because this really is a very much an India story. So India is going digital, clearly. I'm going to talk in three parts this thing. We are going to talk about how platforms are at the heart of this change. And finally, what kind of innovation ecosystem can we start to see emerge out of this? Basically, India is going digital, and as it is going digital, we are going away from paper, we are going away from cash. Now, this entire story is based on a platform which we have referred to as JAM. The J stands for the Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana that has resulted in the opening of about 300 million bank accounts, and they are basically about 300 million families in the country. The idea was to make sure we had one bank account per family. And so this is really about a universalization of banking. The second is on A, which is Aadhaar. That's a digital identity for all. And today we have 1.2 billion people who have an Aadhaar. And the third leg is around mobile connections. And we have around 1.2 billion mobile connections. Now, this is really about a universalization of these platforms. And on top of this, uh, more people going online. We have around uh, half a billion people who are on the internet. We have slightly less than that on social media. And in addition to that, we are seeing transactions go up at a very tremendous rate. We have done about a half a billion payment transactions on UPI. And why is that important? Is because that's really the way we expect people to transact in the future. Now, this change is happening on the basis of many platforms. And these platforms are really made in India, by India, for India. Uh, there are eight platforms I'm going to talk about. The first is Aadhaar, which has an authentication layer, which allows you to prove that you are indeed who you say you are. There's, again, on Aadhaar, there's an EKYC, which allows you to exchange an identity document. The third is a digital signature product, which allows you to sign without using paper. Uh, the fourth is UPI Beam, which is really a new payments platform which we have launched recently. Uh, then there is the Digital Locker, which allows you to share credentials and documents. There is the Bharat Bill Payment System, which is coming up. There is uh, ID for Cars, which is used as part of FastTag. It's called, they're called the Electronic Toll Collection. And then there's a new tax system. There's the Goods and Services Tax. And each of these layers is really a whole bunch of platforms built in India with APIs so you can innovate on top of it. Now, there's about 12 systems globally that have reached a, digital, a billion users digitally. 11 of them are in the US. 11 of them are in the private sector. The 12th is the only one which is in India built by the public sector. And that's Aadhaar. And interestingly, it's also the one that reached a billion users in the fastest possible time. It took five and a half years for us to get there. WhatsApp took six and a half. And then the next one after that was around nine years. Uh, last year, as a country, we did 10 billion authentication transactions. A lot of these came from the government sector, from the food and civil supplies, people drawing rations, bank accounts, telecom. And that's really been the biggest set of users of this platform today. The other thing that happened was we did about 3 billion EKYC transactions last year. And the bulk of these were, again, from the telecom and the banking sector. We did 150 million UPI transactions in December last year, and about 500 million in the entire year. And this is interesting because this is now more, starting to do more transactions than Visa does at the point of sale. We have already crossed that number. Within this month or in the next few months, we'll cross all credit and debit card transactions at the point of sale. And by next year, this is a comparison which will be meaningless because we'll leave it far behind. Uh, the goods and services tax has resulted, we had, before the tax came out, the estimate was around 6 million businesses will file for it. 10 million have already enrolled, which means you've gone one and a half times the number of businesses that we thought we had in the country. $50 billion in taxes have been collected on this system. And this, again, the value of this tax is that beyond the tax element, this is actually a platform, it's an API, it allows it to be integrated into your business workflow. You can have your tally or any other accounting system that you use connect to the tax system. So you do business the way you do business and the taxes will take care of themselves. 
And the benefit of this for the small business is that so far they led a life which was very much undocumented. This now starts to have them leave digital footprints. They can actually now, I mean, Mohan is our prototype user here. And he, because of his taxes, now actually has a digital trail of all the invoices, his purchases, and his sales digitally signed by him, submitted to the government, digitally signed as accepted by the government and the other party coming back to him. This trail is so valuable because for him, it is the first time his life is documented, which allows a bank to give him credit. He has never had access to credit before. And credit, as you know in business, is one of the things that actually allows you to grow. So we believe that this is actually the start of a really credit to the small business revolution, which is going to power our country in just so many different ways. And this, gentlemen, is what we call the India stack. It's this entire set of these systems which will integrate into your daily life, which will allow you to prove that you are who you are without being at a particular location, for instance, a bank. It will allow you to do transactions without exchanging pieces of paper or credentials. You'll do it digitally. There's a payments layer which will allow you to pay cashless. And then there's an automated tax layer. And then finally, there is a consent layer. And this is because we are going digital at this massive pace that we are going to be leaving a lot of digital trails. So using those will require user consent. And this system is designed to be inclusive. I'm taking an example of the payment system here. And while we know that UPI is meant for people with smartphones, there is also one on USSD, which is for feature phones. And you can use Aadhaar Pay if you don't have a phone number phone at all. And as a result, we do expect to see everybody coming in. They're coming in at different rates, but they will certainly all be included. And this is the basis for further innovation. We're already starting to see a lot of companies uh, come up. The government itself has been leveraging this for DBT. Over 300 schemes have used Aadhaar for direct benefit transfer. About 416 million beneficiaries have received money in their bank accounts. Over 2 trillion rupees have been transferred over this system. The government's own estimate is they've said around 57,000 crores. And that's about, uh, you know, a fairly large number. And then we are using it for pensions for people. Uh, today, if you had to prove you were alive, you walked into a bank branch and so you got your pension. But now with this, somebody can come home, do a biometric authentication, and you can continue to draw pension at home. Uh, businesses are going to use it for credit. Finally, there are you know, about 80 plus new companies that were created in the last year, which are only lending on the basis of data. This is a completely new type of company that hadn't existed before in India. We have about $83 billion, which have flown into mutual funds through accounts opened only in a digital manner. We have had 100 million SIM cards. I mean, we just heard the geo story, which is a really fantastic story. And we had our data usage has grown a factor of nine in the last year. A factor of nine. We're not really talking percentages anymore. And that really starts to bring us to this impact. We had McKinsey did a study with a bank. They reimagined how they do account opening. They took time down from six days to one hour. They eliminated a complete back office on doing this. They reduced the number of errors because the customer is right in front of you. And then the branch capacity frees up because now you have less things to deal with. The same happened with uh, a large asset manager. So you're starting to see many large businesses adopt this and reimagine how they deal with customers. And this is really leading to massive improvements. We already know with Geo the concept of walkout working, wow, which is really you walk in, you get a SIM, and you by the time you're out, the SIM is working. It saved rupees 15 for every SIM they issued. They saved sheets of paper, about four sheets of paper for every SIM that was issued. In the first two months alone, they saved 15,000 trees. And you know the story just goes on and on. We are really going to become a data-rich country very soon. And our whole belief is that by becoming data-rich, we can use it to become economically rich. Data is really going to help us grow as a country. Every new, when I mean, you saw all these companies that talked today, a lot of them were talking about data because data is really the foundation on which the next set of wealth is going to be built. And we want to make sure that it, this benefit goes to the user. And the way that will happen is through consented data sharing. The idea is that as a user, 
you have to be in control of your own data. When there is a benefit to you, you share it with somebody. This is true for if, when you take credit, you actually share data about yourself with the bank. But the same is also true for health, the same is true for education, the same is going to be true in every sector that touches our lives on a daily basis. And that really is the value of the stack. In our lifetime, we have seen nonlinear change in terms of the rate at which telephone has grown. We went from 2G, 3G, 4G, and now we're seeing that. The same thing we have seen in the form of the, all of the curves that I showed you are all true exponential curves. So we're going through nonlinear change in at least three or four different aspects of our life, which really means that you know the world of tomorrow is going to be so different than anything that we have today. That you know it's really the start of. It's a new dawn. I mean, it's going to be really a very completely different world today. And as Dr. Mahashilkar, you know, it is being made in India, by India, and for India. And that's really what I want to talk. Thank you.